In this video, I'll show you how to create this amazing mixtality experience using virtual windows. And what's the best part? We'll be using 3D render pipeline and not universal render pipeline. So you don't have to worry about creating and using stencils. We'll be using the shaders that comes along with this package to create this effect. So let's get started. All right, so here I have my Unity project open. I'm using the version 2022.3.13 F1 LTS. And this project has been set up with the latest MetaXR all-in-one SDK version 66. Also, this project has been set up with all the player settings. You can also download this project from the GitHub link provided in the description below. You will also find a link to download the environment asset so you can download it and import it to your Unity project. Now, inside this package, you will get the environment prefab which you should add it to your scene. Now, if you're wondering, yes, this is the exact same environment from Meta's World Beyond. And now, to set up our scene, you can select Meta to tools building blocks from this window we can add the camera rig which adds the tracking space to track your headset hands and controllers let's add the pass through layer so that you can see your physical world then you can select the scene tab and add anchor prefab spawner this will add the mr utility kit game object with the mr uk script now this script is responsible for getting your scene model and all the scene data like your walls doors and all the 3d objects that you have mapped in your environment and then it also has the anchor prefab game object which comes along with the anchor prefab spawner component what this component does is based on the labels that you have selected here for example floor walls door windows and wall art it will spawn the wall prefab on top of it now the prefab to spawn come by default and we don't really need this so let's select them and get rid of them for now at this stage if you press play and test it out you will be able to see your virtual environment and not your physical world and that's because our pass through layer is right now placed as an underlay so in order to see our physical world you need to add the selective pass through material to each of the labels of your scene model for example if you want to see your walls you need to add selective pass through material to your walls if you want to see the ceiling, then you have to do the same for the ceiling. And now I'll show you just that. Now to create a wall prefab, let's create an empty game object and call it as wall. And inside this game object, we'll have to create a quad. And then rotate it by 180 degrees so that the forward direction of the wall will match the forward direction of your physical wall. And then you can reset its transform. Go back inside the asset folder and create a new folder called prefabs. Select the wall game object and drag and drop it inside the prefabs folder. Then delete the wall prefab from your hierarchy. Select anchor prefab spawner. Add an element to your list and from the labels you can select wall faces. And the prefab that we want to spawn is going to be this particular wall. Now this is going to automatically stretch and align the walls to your physical world walls. Now to test this I'm going to use the meta simulator and to activate it you can go inside meta, meta XR simulator and click on activate. And then when you press play, it will activate the simulator where the player is inside a living room. And as you can see here, it has spawned the wall prefab and stretched it to match the walls of the room. The next step here is to change the default material of your wall to a material called selective pass through that allows you to see your physical world. So open the wall prefab, select the quad. In your project window, let's create a new material and call it as selective pass through. From the shader drop down, search for selective pass through and select it. Here we need to change the blend color from reverse subtract to subtract and we need to change the render queue to transparent and give it an additional value of plus two. Then select this material and add it to your quad. And now if we go back to our scene, press play and test it once again. And this time you'll be able to see your physical world and that's because the wall prefab that has been spawned has the selective pass through material on it. All right, now we can do the same for our flow and ceiling. And the best way to do it is to select the wall prefab and name it as 3D plane. And then select the anchor prefab spawner and from the labels, we can add floor and ceiling as well. So now if you press play and test it out, you will be able to see your entire physical world. However, you can see here on the floor, we have some Z fighting happening. Now you can solve this easily by going back into the editor, open the 3D plane, select the quad and bring it forward slightly by 0.01. And now once again, if you test your scene, you will no longer have that issue. And now to create a window or a portal into your virtual world, in your hierarchy, create an empty game object and call it as portal and then 
create a 3D quad as a child of the portal and rotate it by 180 degrees. Make sure to select the portal and reset its position. Now to add the portal material in your asset folder, create a new material and call it as pass through window. From the shader drop down, select the world beyond and select depth only. From the render queue drop down, you need to select alpha test, then select the material, add it to your quad, select the portal and drag and drop it inside the prefabs folder. Now you can get rid of the portal prefab from your hierarchy, select anchor prefab spawner, add an element to the list and from the labels let's unselect these three and select just the door frame and window frame and the prefab that we want to spawn is going to be this portal now there could be a possibility that the portal is going to get spawned exactly on the walls it might cause z fighting or you might not be able to see it at all so you can go inside the portal prefabs select the quad and bring it slightly forward the value that i like to have is 0.03 and then go back to your scene and now you can save it press play and test it out and as you can see here the portals have spawned on the doors and on the window however there's one issue that you might notice here and that is the portals occlude the furnitures so let's see how we can fix that now to make sure that the physical objects like furnitures tables plants storage and other things in your physical environments occludes the portal create an empty game object and call it as 3d volume and create a 3d cube as a child of this and for this cube, you can add the selective pass through material, select the 3D volume, drag and drop it inside the prefab folder, get rid of it from your hierarchy, select the anchor prefab spawner, add a new element and from the labels, select nothing. And from this list, we want to select all the things that we have not selected in the above two elements, which is going to be the table, couch, others, storage, bed, screen, lamp, plant and wall art. And then Replace the portal prefab with the 3D volume that we created just now. And now for the last time you can save your scene and test it out. And as you can see here, the furnitures are occluding the portal, making it look realistic. Now before we end this video, I want to show you how you can take it up a notch higher by making it look like this. So to create that, select the portal, drag and drop it into your scene. Open its child and create an empty game object and call it as frame. Inside the frame, create four cubes and then adjust the position and scale for each of the cube to make it look like a frame. Once that's done, click on the overrides drop down and click on apply all. Then in your assets folder, create a new material. Then select all the four cubes and change its material to wood default. And for the last steps, you can select the portal, click on the override drop down, click on apply all and remove it from your scene. And this time it looks something like this, which is way cooler to look at. This was just one of the many ways in which you can create virtual windows. But the next step from here would be to add some cool interactions like shooting objects into your physical and virtual worlds. Now, if you want to know how to add this mechanic, then do let us know in the comments below. Also, we have some really cool videos coming up on our website. Feel free to check them out from the link provided in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.